You don't want to waste that valuable real estate on things that do not improve the ability of buyers to find the item you're trying to sell. guys so welcome back to Bama J Bird resale welcome back to my channel guys it's good to be with you my name is Josh for those of you that don't know me uh, so good to have all the new subscribers I'm blown away by what's taken place in the last month or so thank you also to John and Jenna over at flipping ain't easy for having me on your live guys uh, I just really appreciate you, love you to death. Thank you so much for all you did for me and all you do for the reselling community. Y'all deserve the best. I hope this year goes amazing for y'all. Uh, John, I hope you really reap the benefits of all the time and energy and effort that you put into trying to reach out and help the reselling community. No one can know just how much effort that takes without having stepped behind the camera and tried to do a video for YouTube. And with all the content you produce, quality stuff that helps us out. Man, we thank you and we appreciate all that you do. So today we're gonna to be looking at two things. We're gonna look of course at what's sold, but we're also going to be continuing with our topic of formatting titles. But today we're gonna to be looking, instead of at the general format, we're gonna look at what not to use in the titles. We can sometimes get in a bad habit, guys, of, of including things that are unnecessary and wasting valuable space. We only get 80 characters. It's important how we use them. Uh, you don't wanna waste that valuable real estate on things that don't matter or things that do not improve the ability of buyers to find the item you're trying to sell. So we wanna make sure that we go over really well some things that we should avoid when we are constructing a title that we don't wanna include in there that kinda of takes away from our listing and causes us to maybe have a harder time being found in search results. All right, before we do that, let's take a look at some of the things that have sold over the weekend. It was a pretty decent weekend overall. I have 16 items going out the door today and they're going out for $615.45. I'd really like for that number from a weekend to land somewhere around $1,000, so I'm a little short of what I kind of have in mind, but I'm so thankful for what is selling. I know some of you out there are struggling to make sales, and guys, just wanna encourage you, keep listing, keep working, keep sourcing better, make sure you're finding good items with good sell-through rates, and if you'll stay consistent, things will turn around. Um, I promise this, that the system's not broken. It may not be working like it's worked in the past, but you can still sell items if you source the right items and you price them right and you list them well. Okay, so first item going out the door, I have a set of G.I. Joe Nano Metal Figs. I bought these a long time ago. I don't have a lot in them. They sat on the shelf a long time. I finally lowered the price to $3.99 plus shipping and I had someone make the purchase. All right, next item, I have a set of Primus CDs. I got these from the same lady that does the storage lockers. That same buy for 30 bucks. I keep adding to that total. These I sold for $12.99 plus shipping. So making a lot of profit off of that buy and I would encourage you to look for purchases like that, not necessarily media specifically. We're talking about bulk lots that have a low cost in them that you know that if you group right and you lot them up correctly, you can make a really good profit. And the next item. All right, so this came from a yard sale. This is a vintage M Kamenstein measuring cup or measuring bowl. It's fairly large. Uh, this is eight cups, what it hold. It does have a lid, but it's got a small crack in it. It's the kind of Tupperware lot material. I noted that in the listing, showed it in the photographs. This still sold for $10 plus shipping on an offer. I, I'm good with that. I didn't have hardly anything in it and I'm already in the profit from that sale and have several more things that are listed that will sell eventually. All right, so next I have a single stitch tree bark camo made in USA t-shirt. This is a really cool item. I love single stitch tees. I love finding single stitch camo. They tend to move pretty well for me if you price them right and you keep your cost down. Cost is so important, never forget that. I say it a lot. Keep your cost of goods as low as possible. So I've got 250 in this, sold it for $14 plus shipping on an offer. So next I have a summary Bible. This is New King James edition. It is the Holman Bible Publishers and I've sold this once before. You may have seen it in a previous video. That purchaser, when they got it and opened it up, said, wow, that's a lot smaller than I expected it to be. And I thought, I mean, it's, it's, it is what it is. I listed, listed it like it was. I didn't make any claims that it was a large Bible or large print or anything like that, but they returned it. 
Uh, they weren't pleased with it and it has already sold a second time. I actually had to take it out of the pack uh, to get ready to pack it appropriately because man, the little bubble mailer they put it in barely even fit. Next item is a pair of mountain khakis, mountain khakis, Jackson Hole. These are relaxed fit, 36, 32. Mountain Khaki is a decent brand. It's not the best brand that you're gonna find, uh, but it sells pretty well. You gotta keep the price down. It's like everything else. I got an offer of $15 and took it on these. I was into these for three bucks, so $15 plus ship on those. Next item, this is a Victoria's Secret, new with tags, pajama top, very nice, super soft, kind of that satin light material. And I had, again, I think it was $3 in this. It's $2.50 or $3. And I sold this for $19.99 plus shipping. All right, next item. I've got a pair of women's Liverpool jeans. I don't know if you can really see, probably not, the tag on these. But I may put a picture of these up. It's not a really important brand. It's not super expensive. I actually took an offer of $16 plus shipping on these. And these are like an ankle skinny. The thing that sets these apart, probably made these sell, is the fact they're an 18W. So it's not a bad brand, but bigger sizes, right? They always sell better. And so when we get into plus sizes of men's or women's clothing, those are good to watch out for. Uh, you might find unexpected value in some brands there. Next, I have a pair of Crocs. So if you don't know, Crocs are a good item to pay attention to. Some of the women's Crocs, especially some of the wedges and some of the sandals like this can be really valuable. Um, I, you know, that everything's up and down. But Crocs as a whole tend to sell well if you can get into them for $5 or less. Um, some of them may be worth a little more than that on a purchase price when you're buying them to resell if you look them up and it's the right ones. These particular ones, not as popular. They sell for $22 plus shipping. But some of the Crocs will sell for as much as $40 or $50 and even higher sometimes. So it's good to watch out for those. Next item. This is a two-tone Carhartt belt. I've told you that belts can be a sneaky good category. So Carhartt is also a good brand. But this is Italian leather. Very nice belt. Very soft. I actually only had about five bucks in this. I listed this for $24.99 plus shipping and got my full asking price, $24.99 plus shipping. Again, a sneaky good category. Pay attention to those. Take time to look them up. I've had some belts sell for as much as $150 to $200. Next item, I have an Under Armour US Naval Academy quarter zip pullover jacket. I think I got that at one of my local mom and pop shops. I got about $3 in it. And I know I say that a lot, but literally I hardly ever pay more than $3 for any clothing item. Um, when I do, I'm at one of the higher dollar thrift stores and I'm only spending more because it's something that has really good value. So most of my clothes, I'm at two to $3. About $3 in that, got 25 plus shipping on an offer. All right, so let's step away from the what sold and take a look at our topic let's take a look at what to avoid when writing your eBay titles. Remember guys, you only get 80 total characters to put your title together and make it the best it can be. Make all of them count. Do not waste valuable title real estate on unnecessary items. So titles, the don't do list. Number one, promotional messages or buzzwords should be avoided. They're mostly wasted space and include things like rare, cool, hot item, last one, free shipping, on sale now, act fast, and many, many other items. Number two, unnecessary acronyms or abbreviations that are mostly used by resellers should also be avoided. Most buyers don't understand these and they often lead to buyer confusion. These would include NWT, new with tags, NIB, new in box, EUC, excellent use condition, OOP, out of print, NOS, new old stock, GU, gently used. If you must use these, make sure that you write them out. Next, number three, avoid using emojis, punctuation marks, extra spaces, or other unnecessary characters. Again, this does not improve your search results and it will often just lead to wasted space. Number four, never use misleading, false, or inaccurate information. This can get you in big trouble with eBay. False advertising is bad. This also includes keyword stuffing that does not relate to your actual product. Be wary of these things, guys. And again, stop using emojis. And instead, use that space to optimize your search results. Okay, so some final thoughts on what not to use in your eBay titles. Avoid misspellings. Misspelled words and titles can cause you to lose sales by not populating into search results. Also, don't worry about sentence structure. We're not writing an essay or trying to win an award. Number three, don't use plural forms of words unless it is absolutely necessary to do so. So in conclusion, focus on words that buyers use in searches. These are the ones that are most important. 
Front load your title with the most important search terms, the ones buyers want to see first. And finally, don't completely sacrifice user friendliness simply to achieve search engine optimization. All right, so let's get back to what sold and wrap this up. So next on our list of items going out the door is a George Strait Wrangler button up. This is a small, but it was new with tags. It had a really cool pattern. And uh, I went ahead and picked this up. I think I got about $7 in this, but this sold for $30 plus shipping. This was not at one of the mom and pop shops. This was at one of my thrift stores where they price things up a good bit. But that was still a decent, a decent purchase, decent sale. Next, I have a lot of guidepost patchwork series books. There are 12 of these. I'll try to hoist them up and show you best I can. All right, so there they are. I got these for 10 cents a book at a yard sale. It was a church sale. And it was the last day and everything they had left on the last day, they had it at 10 cents each. Didn't matter what it was. So I uh, got a really good deal on these, a dollar and 20 cents in. I sold these for 39.99 plus shipping. So my total sales is lower, but because my cost of goods is low, my profit margin is wider. The amount that I get to keep is gonna be larger than it is maybe for some that had to pay up more than I have been. All right, next, if you watched my recent thrifting video you saw me chasing down a cart at goodwill i saw these and was pretty sure what they were when i saw them based on the stitching you can always tell doc martens they usually have that yellow stitching along the soles and so i saw these rolling by and they don't like you to shop off the carts at my goodwill so i try to be patient and and not be one of those people you know that that do things that, that upset them but I wound up, you know, chasing the cart down to the men's section and I asked permission to get these particular shoes. I looked them up and they were a pretty good purchase. $5 into a $35 plus shipping sale. I'll take that. These are going out the door very quick. They were listed for maybe two days and they sold. All right, so our next item is a Waymaker Western style vest. Very nice print, it's kind of like a coppery gold color or something like that i guess you'd call it this is a size large very very nice vest these if you ever find waymaker brand vest and they're not priced up much you better grab them if they're in good shape this one sold for 39.99 plus shipping i found a few of these and they always sell well you got to price them competitive uh, some some people want to get like 60 and 70 dollars and they may sell for that if you're willing to sit on it for two years but on clothing items, I try to be competitive, get mine sold, and move on. All right, last item. I don't know about these. I worry about selling stuff like this because of returns. But it's a really awesome sale as long as there's no problems. This is a set of seven Invisible Fence batteries. I bought a bag of Invisible Fence items for $6 at my little honey hole thrift shop, as I refer to it and um, had two collars with the, the pieces. They were older generation, but the batteries are still the same for most all the collars. And it had all these new batteries and it had nine of them. I lotted one with each collar and then I put these seven on together. I got $99, $99.99 plus shipping for these seven batteries. The only thing I'm not sure about is how old they are. So there is a chance and, and there was no, I couldn't find a date on these anywhere. So I know there's a chance that these could come back to me because they maybe are bad. Uh, so I may end up having a refund, but I've got really nothing in them. The collars are gonna probably make me $300 or better selling those used because they're in pretty good shape. So I, I'm good with that, but I thought, you know, there's no reason not to list these. Worst case scenario, okay, I'm out a little bit of shipping money. I may even just tell them, don't worry about it if they tell me they're bad. I mean, I'm just being honest because um, it's probably not gonna be worth it to me to pay shipping twice. Anyway, we'll see how that goes. I'm kind of interested. I hope they're good and I hope I get to keep that hundred dollars. All right, so I hope that today you found something in the video somewhere that you find beneficial. I hear Rocky Top sometimes, Rocky Top Picker. If you haven't checked out his channel, go check him out. Great friend of mine has been very supportive of me, but he uses this word, I wanna give him a nugget. And I hope that somewhere in this, if it would just sound like blah, blah, blah to you, that somewhere in it, you found a nugget of something that maybe you didn't know or you hadn't heard before that can help you to become better at crafting your titles and getting better results in the searches. I really hope I was able to help you. But guys, for now, that's all I have. Uh, I appreciate everything that, that everybody's doing for me in the reselling community. Guys, I appreciate all the new subscribers. Thank y'all so much. It means the world to me. I can't tell you how grateful I am for those of you that are watching the videos, taking time to comment. I feel like I'm making friends. I mean, that means a lot. But, you know, like I always say, guys, I love you. 
God loves you. And whatever you do, whatever you do out there, guys, don't you ever, don't ever give up. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.